few days, Reverend Sharpton has been more than Batman for us. <laughs> he's come to our defense. He's counseled us. He's been a conscience as he always is for this city and this nation. Uh, I just have to tell you, at a time it was very painful yeah. and challenging for us. He was a rock of strength and clarity for us. Thank you, Reverend Sharp. <laughs> 21 years ago, Sherlane and I were working in City Hall for Mayor Dinkins. Come on now. I met this beautiful, strong woman. Yeah. I've said many times for me, it was love at first sight. It may have taken Sherlane a little longer. And I got to know her, and I saw a human being that I fell deeper and deeper in love with. A human being. And I am so proud of the years of struggle and activism, of what she did for women, for the LGBT community, for people of color, and the anti-apartheid movement. I am so proud of this woman and the good work she did. And for 18 years she has been my wife. She is the mother of two extraordinary children. I could not be more blessed. And so I say to the New York Post first, my first response is as a husband and a father. Leave my wife alone, leave my children alone. Shirley McRae cannot defend herself because I assure you she can. But I'm offended. They denigrated a woman who is a role model by any measure. By any measure. And it's just not their place to do that. I think there are actually some people at the Post who have a conscience. There are some people the post who are good people. I don't know how they tolerate this. Or how they tolerate the cartoon of Reverend Sharpton years ago. Or how they tolerate the depiction of the President of the United States of America. I don't know how they stand for it. And the only way things change, and, and I want to talk about the state senate too, because these things are related. It's all related. The reason these things somehow continue to exist is because some people tolerate them. Yeah. And if you look at your American history, and look at McCarthyism, which was one of the most horrible and destructive moments in the history of this nation, it was journalists like Edward R. Murrow who said, we're not doing this anymore. Who set a standard for the rest. Who said, this is not what our nation is supposed to be about. And that started to break down the wall. And then one by one, people stood up and spoke out. And it's time for us to say once and for all to the New York Post, stop dividing this city. We will not take that We have so many challenges in New York City. We are too often two cities. There is too often a distance between those who are doing well and those who are struggling, those who have all their rights and those who don't. We need to become one city, and the New York Post has to get with the program. Yes. Finally, to the Senate. Uh, there's only one kind of democracy. The people of those districts voted for Democrats. 
They did what people all over this country did. There was a mandate. You can't ignore the mandate of the people. Not only did the Democrats achieve so much as we've heard, not only is John Sampson the kind of selfless leader that might begin to restore people's faith in politics when they see something like he did today. God bless him for it. We need people in public life to understand when you're given a mandate by the people, you must respect it. Yes. If you don't respect it, there are huge consequences. I'm not just talking about how the people will resolve the issue of the next election, and they surely will. I'm talking about what it means for our country. Yes. We, so many of us on November 6th, felt that we were beginning something new and powerful with the re-election of our president. Mm -hmm. So many of us back in Charlotte felt that the Democratic Party mm -hmm. was coming into its own, embracing yeah. all its elements, ready to help move the entire nation forward as one. For our president to succeed, he needs legislatures around the country to support him. And where would he expect that support more than the state of New York? And we must deliver that support to our president because it's the right thing to do. And I agree with my colleagues. I want to thank everyone who spoke today, my colleagues in public life who spoke on behalf of my family. I thank them deeply. But we all need to say clearly that we will support our president, that we will be what New York State and New York City has always been. And there's plenty of time to get this right and have the Democratic Senate take office that the people of New York State voted for. It's as simple as that. Now I know Mr. Lane is deeply grateful for the many people who called and reached out these last few days. I know she wants to express that. Thank, thank you, everyone. I really appreciate your support. It's wonderful to be surrounded by so many powerful orators who can, can speak to the needs of our, our city and our humanity. Um, I'm a bit uncomfortable standing here talking. I would rather be writing an article. But I, I wrote the article 33 years ago because I believe it's so important to speak out for what's important to you, no matter how your words might be twisted or turned. It's, it's important because when you verbalize something, you you put it out there for people to deal with, right? Your silence will not protect you. <laughs> I think that is the lesson of the day here, whether we're talking about the Senate or, or this post-cartoon. Silence is, is just not a good thing. So, Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. And let's go out and make some change.